today we are going to see about drug induced gingival enlargement. What are the drugs which is contributing to this and what is the pathogenesis, what are the clinical manifestations, differential diagnosis like how we can differentiate from other gingival enlargement and various treatment approaches. So, I am Dr. Mona Priya, voice behind dental shots. If you have not subscribed to our channel, kindly subscribe by clicking the bell button below and let's move on to the topic. When certain systemic medications are taken, it leads to overgrowth of gingiva like this. It may be localized or generalized. Why so? Because everyone takes systemic medication. Why someone are responders to the medication and someone are non-responders? They do not form gingival enlargement even though they take medication. So these are the list of drugs which contribute to the gingival enlargement, mainly anticonvulsants, immunosuppressants and calcium channel blockers. Now they have also found out the erythromycin also contributes to gingival enlargement. All these drugs produce gingival enlargement by the mechanism of inhibiting the intracellular calcium ion influx. In addition, the dental plaque which also acts as a cofactor for the gingival overgrowth when taking this systemic medications. This gingival overgrowth is a side effect because the gingival connective tissue is the secondary target tissue for these systemic drugs. Hence, there is also a role of fibroblast which is involved because certain individuals have a fibroblast subset which is more fibrogenicity is present and non-responders will have fibroblast which has less fibrogenicity. The role of cytokines, especially the pro-inflammatory cytokines contributing to the gingival fibroblast proliferation and collagen synthesis and glycosaminoglycan synthesis. This is because the inflamed gingiva has more amount of pro-inflammatory cytokines leading to fibroblast proliferation as well as collagen and glycosaminoglycan synthesis. Coming to the role of MMPs, matrix metalloproteinases, which is one of the collagenases. So all these systemic drugs which I mentioned before will inhibit this collagenase synthesis as well as collagenase function. It inhibits MMP function and as well as synthesis and hence the proliferation of gingiva occurs. In addition, they also postulated there is a discontinuity in the basement membrane so that there is an interaction between epithelium and connective tissue which leads to fibrotic changes in the gingival enlargement while taking all these systemic medications. The clinical manifestations of drug induced gingival enlargement. Usually the initiation of these enlargement will occur after one to three months after the taking these systemic medications. The drug induced gingival enlargement usually starts in the interdental papilla as a painless bead like swelling and later it will continue in the marginal gingiva. So these gingival overgrowth in the interdental papilla and the marginal gingiva unite together to form a massive fold of gingival enlargement. Consider the case doesn't have a gingival inflammation prior to the systemic medication, then there will be no inflammation so the patient may present to you as mulberry shaped gingival enlargement, pale pink in color, firm and resilient and there is no tendency to bleed. In addition, there will be a lobulated appearance with a groove present in between the gingival enlargement and the gingival margin. So after a course of time, the plaque control will be difficult with these enlargement and hence there will be a secondary gingival inflammation which adds size to these lesion becoming red and bluish red in color and there will be no lobulation or no demarcation by the groove. In addition, there will be a greater tendency to bleed if it is secondary inflammation is present. Mostly the gingival overgrowth due to the drugs will be throughout the mouth but most severely affected would be the maxillary and mandibular anteriors. So if you extract certain tooth then the gingival enlargement in the particular region where you have extracted will subside. That is only in the areas where the teeth is there the gingival enlargement will be there due to systemic drugs. Sometimes rarely you can see in the edentulous area also. 
let's now see how to differentiate the drug induced gingival enlargement from other type of gingival enlargement first we can see about acute inflammatory enlargement like abscess acute abscess the abscess would be rapid onset with acute pain and it will be localized gingival enlargement so inflammatory enlargement of chronic nature will have a reddish and bluish red color soft and friable and also smooth and shiny more bleeding to tendency the second differential diagnosis would be the idiopathic gingival enlargement which is also called as familial or hereditary gingival enlargement the cause is not known that's why they call it as idiopathic and also maybe a hereditary cause would be there hence it is called familial or hereditary gingival enlargement so these enlargement will either affect the maxillary jaw or mandibular jaw not both and in addition it involves attached gingiva in addition to gingival margin and interdental papilla and pink form leathery in consistency minimally pebbled surface will be there in these gingival enlargement and the third differential diagnosis would be conditioned gingival enlargement conditioned means the systemic condition of the patient will distort the gingival response to the dental plaque for example it would be a hormonal conditioning like as you see in pregnancy and puberty or it may be due to nutritional deficiency like vitamin c that is also a conditioned gingival enlargement or it could be an allergic gingival enlargement like plasma cell gingivitis so when you see a conditioned gingival enlargement it will be mostly involving the interproximal areas not the marginal gingiva and attached gingiva if you have an allergic plasma cell gingivitis type of enlargement that is allergic type of gingival enlargement it will only affect the oral aspect of the attached gingiva coming to the fourth differential diagnosis would be systemic disease associated gingival enlargement like leukemia sarcoidosis tuberculosis the fifth differential diagnosis would be neoplastic gingival enlargement that is it is firm nodular and hard consistency and sometimes it will look like a wart like protuberance from the gingival surface the sixth differential diagnosis would be false enlargement here the gingiva is not enlarged but it is just seen that the gingiva seems to be enlarged because either the osseous structure underneath would be enlarged or the dental structure underneath the gums get enlarged hence it is called false enlargement let's now see how to differentiate the gingival overgrowth induced by various systemic drugs first is phenobarbitone induced gingival enlargement these enlargements will not have lobulation of the interdental papilla in addition the severity will be mostly higher in the posterior region when compared to anterior region coming to the cyclosporin induced gingival enlargement which is an immunosuppressant in nature there will be a lobulation which be present in addition there will be a pebbly and papillary surface with a superimposed candidial infection because the person is immunosuppressed with these medication they also say that these enlargement by cyclosporin are more hyperemic hence it is more readily bleeds when probe when compared to phenobarbitone enlargement coming to the treatment first would be either it would be a non surgical approach and if it is not subsiding by non surgical approach then we can opt for the surgical approach of gingival enlargement first the main aim is to reduce the gingival enlargement by reducing the inflammation that is by removing the plaque by scaling and root planing in addition if the patient is immunosuppressed they are saying that the topical antifungal medications like nystatin will work better and also they have found the nsaids and systemic azithromycin would be helpful in cases of immunocompromised gingival drug induced gingival enlargement we have to consult the physician before discontinuing the medication if you compare the discontinuation and changing the medication i would always prefer you for changing the medication under the physician concern so there are lot of options alternative medications first for pheno 
phenytoin we can replace it by carbamazepin or valproate which have a gingival enlargement in lesser in nature when compared to phenytoin there are also new generation of anticonvulsants like uh, lamotrigine carbapentin topir topiramate for cyclosporin we instead of that we can use tacrolimus or we can use mycophenolic acid or azathioprine which has an anti proliferative and anti inflammatory action and hence instead of cyclosporine we can use these drugs instead of nifedipine we can use dihydropyridine derivatives like estradipine which also decreases the gingival overgrowth always when you substitute any drug to reduce this enlargement we have to at least wait for 6 to 12 months for the resolution of drug induced gingival enlargement after you attempt a substitute drug even after these 6 to 12 months if it is not subsiding only we have to opt for surgical management that is even after the drug substitution and waiting for 6 to 12 months if it is not subsiding even after good plaque control by non surgical method if it's not subsiding we are going to choose the surgical approach in surgical approach we can either use scalpel gingivectomy or it would be a periodontal flap surgical techniques or electro surgery or laser excision so what type of surgical plan would be based on the gingival enlargement type as well as the pocket depth mucogingival junction and osseous defects coming to the maintenance we can use a chlorhexidine oral rinse and professional cleaning regularly to reduce the rate and severity of drug induced gingival enlargement we can also use a hard rubber fitted bite guard to reduce the recurrence after the surgery mostly it will not recur at least for 3 to 6 months and sometimes it may not recur for 12 months also i hope this video would have given you a overall view of drug induced gingival overgrowth if you like the video kindly click the like button and subscribe to dental shots for further notification of new videos in our channel have a great day god bless you all thank you